Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert, and I've got a couple questions to ask you at the start of today's video. In particular, have you been kind of thinking about a weight loss medication? Maybe you've been thinking about Saxenda based on my last video. Have you thought about losing weight first and then going on to a weight loss medication? Well, it just so happens I have got a lovely little study by Wadden and Friends that we are going to review in detail today to kind of answer some of those questions as to whether it would be beneficial to first lose weight and then go on a medication such as Saxenda. So let's get into it. Now, before I dive into it, as always, we gotta do the rigmarole. I need you to hit the subscribe button down below. If everyone that just watches my video would just do that, we wouldn't have to do this part anymore. But, you know, that's not the case, and so it's just a little reminder so that you don't miss another video once I put them out. And you also probably wanna check me out on my other channels, at the official Dr. Dan. We're on the TikTok, the gram, you name it, we're out there. As well, check out my website, healthevolved.co. Again, that is healthevolved.co, O is an orange, and you can book a free consultation with myself to see if you're a good fit for our program. So today's study, I mean, I thought it was pretty cool, but this is also coming from a guy that will read scientific papers on his lunch hour because he, he enjoys it that much. So hopefully the way that I break it down for you will also be as equally as fun, fun-ish, fun, fun stuff. We're just, we're just gonna do the fun stuff today. Anyways, today we are again talking about Saxenda. I know I've done this is my second video in a row with Saxenda, but again, there is the shortage with Wagovi and Mangero, and so putting it out there and trying to give you a bit of information in case this is an option that has been offered to you for your weight management journey. Most studies that are done with weight loss medications, generally they get a big group of people together, split them into two, one group gets the drug, the other group gets a placebo that looks like the drug and stuff, and then they follow them for a period of time to see how much each group loses over the course of a year-long, six-month, whatever amount of period. Today's study by Wadden and Friends is like a tad bit different in that they did what's called a run-in period before they put the participants either on the placebo or on the drug. So what Wadden and Friends wanted to do is they wanted to have people lose weight before they got the drug Saxenda to see what kind of effect or what kind of extra effects the Saxenda would offer. Would they just go to weight maintenance? Would they continue to lose? And how would that compare to the placebo? So initially in their run-in period, it lasted for about four to 12 weeks. They were aiming to get the individuals in the study that they recruited to lose about 5% or more of their baseline body weight before any drug was introduced. As a quick aside in terms of what we know when it comes to weight loss, weight loss medications and that sort of thing, is that a five to 10% weight loss is, is pretty significant. In fact, over 5% is usually what we consider clinically significant, has a number of potential health benefits, and people can certainly lose five to 10% or even more through lifestyle interventions alone. So working on their dietary patterns, their activity levels, and that sort of thing. However, one of the hardest things in this situation is preventing weight regain. In fact, one of the things that we often say in the obesity space is that the best way to gain five pounds is to lose 20 pounds. For a vast majority of people, after they've gone on a diet, they've lost some weight, and now they're kind of in maintenance or what have you, over the next 12 months, a majority of people will regain anywhere from 35 to 40% of the weight that was lost. And so we're always looking at ways as to how we can bridge these people and help them to maintain the weight losses because any benefits that may have been conferred will ultimately be lost if they regain all of the weight. And certainly we have some data showing that regular activity and lifestyle counseling and that sort of thing can certainly help people to maintain their weight losses for up to at least two and a half years. 
but they are certainly more challenging. And so we're now starting to bring in the aspect of pharmaceuticals. So what Wadden and friends did is they basically got individuals that have obesity. All right, and they defined obesity based on the BMI, which means a BMI greater than 30 or a BMI greater than 27, but they had some kind of additional comorbidity that was weight related, such as high blood pressure or something of that fact. And so what they did first in the run-in period is, well, they recruited about 422 individuals, got them all together, and then they put them on a low calorie diet, anywhere from 12 to 1400 calories a day. There was some meal replacement shakes that were included and that sort of thing, but basically the goal was to get them to lose that 5% or more body fat as quickly as possible. So essentially they could get them randomized and get half the group onto a placebo and half the group onto Saxenda. They were also told to engage in weekly activity. They followed up with a nutritionist and all those wonderful things to make sure it was done safely and hopefully in the most effective manner possible. Now, I can't say that for the average Joe, the dietary intervention they did in this run-in period was the most ideal, if you will, but they had the goal of getting to that 5% or more weight loss. And so using meal replacement shakes and stuff was just how they did it in a manner that was quicker than usual. Once the participants reached that 5% percent or more loss in their baseline body weight they then got randomized either to the saxenda group which was titrated up to a dose of three milligrams a day or they were put into the placebo group and in the process of this randomization they were then given a dietary approach which was much more reasonable the meal replacement shakes were no longer used and the participants were told to follow a 500 calorie per day deficit in layman terms, what that meant is that their total energy expenditure over the course of a day was calculated and they were told to eat 500 calories less than that total daily energy expenditure of their bodies. And of course, they were provided more counseling and encouraged to do activity and all of the wonderful things. And then they were followed for a full 56 week period or a little over a year. All right, that is the boring stuff. So let's get into their results. And fortunately for us, they have a beautiful little graph that they produced. I did write an article on this study, so you can go see the graph a little bit more blown up in case you can't see it very well here. But as you can see, there's the various different sections and areas. As you can see here, we have the run-in period at the start. So that's the area where they were just doing lifestyle meal replacement shakes and that sort of thing. And on average, most of the participants lost about 6% of their weight from their baseline. Then in the gray area here, we have the actual treatment period. So here, about 212 people were given Saxenda and about 210 individuals were then given the placebo. Now, as you can see, actually both groups continued to lose weight after they got this randomization. However, the group in that blue line there at the bottom had Saxenda and they lost a considerable amount of weight, more so than the placebo group. In fact, the Saxenda group lost another 6.2% of their weight from their baseline. So they lost the 6% the initial, and then they went on and lost another 6.2%. And unfortunately, the placebo group, while they did continue to lose, as you can see there, we start seeing the weight regain start occurring towards the end of the trial. And overall in the treatment period, they only lost another 0.2% body weight from their original baseline. So some of the overall results we saw was that in the Saxenda group, over 81.4% of individuals maintained the greater than 5% weight loss that they achieved at the beginning of the study. So that initial 6% that a majority of them lost 81% of those individuals maintain that weight loss towards the end of the study, whereas only about 48.9% of the individuals in the placebo group were able to maintain that initial 5% weight loss. Further, within the Saxenda group, about 50% of individuals went on to lose another 5% of their weight from baseline after that initial 6 or 5% loss that was at the start of the study. So they lost over 10%. Furthermore, there was a small group of about 26% of individuals that after the run-in period and then getting put on Saxenda went on to lose another 10% of their baseline body weight. So they not only lost the 6%, then they lost another 10% while being on Saxenda. 
And then another smaller group, almost to that 25%, I believe, then went on with Saxenda to lose 15% more weight from their baseline. So they lost the 6% and then they got on Saxenda and they lost another 15% or more of their baseline body weight. Again, this was compared to placebo group where only 21% of individuals in the placebo group, remember 50% in the Saxenda group, but 21% of individuals in the placebo group lost an additional 5% in the treatment period and only about 6% lost an additional 10% in the treatment period. So clearly Saxenda was definitely more effective for a vast majority of people. Going back to the lovely little graph here, you can see another area called F, if you will, or follow-up period at the end, where the authors did what is called a trial or drug off period, where basically all the individuals are taken off Saxenda, um, the other individuals continued on placebo and the authors just kind of followed them for a little bit longer to ultimately see what happened. And as you can see, there was definitely some weight gain that occurred after the individuals came off of Saxenda. The placebo group continued to gain as well. And the way that this trend was going was that if the trend or the study went on longer, then we probably would have seen even more weight gain. So once again, this kind of result where the drug is removed and people start to regain the weight that they lost, once again shows that similar to my need for caffeine in life, many of these people will need to be on these medications for life in order to maintain the, the weight that they lost. To give you a bit more in terms of just the numbers that did occur instead of just percentages, as that can always be a little bit hard to wrap your head around sometimes, if we look at the Saxenda group and we go right from the very beginning, so before the run-in period where it was no medication, through the entire treatment period to the end of that 56 weeks, the Saxenda group on average lost about 12 kilos or about 26 or so pounds versus about six kilos or 12-ish, 13-ish some odd pounds in the placebo group. So quite a large different difference from start to finish of the treatment period. And this is really not too shabby, at least if we compare these results to the results that we saw in the SCALE trial. Again, link to that video is down below. That was the other Saxenda trial that I looked at where participants were right out the gate put on Saxenda or placebo. And what they found there is that the Saxenda group ended up losing on average about 8% of their body weight from baseline or about 8.4 kilos. Now it's technically hard to make any kind of generalizations. The studies were a little bit different. The sample sizes were considerably different but it may look like doing a run-in period or losing a certain amount of weight first may be beneficial before jumping on one of these weight loss medications. It could potentially lead to a greater amount of overall weight loss. Of course, this is purely speculative and I'm kind of pulling it out of my butt, but something that is certainly worth looking at and I don't know if there's actually any studies or literature really showing a study that is more long-term that really can demonstrate that, kind of doing a Saxenda right out the, out the gate versus another group where they have that run-in period and then they're put on Saxenda to compare the overall weight loss at the end of the study. <clears throat> but I will do a thorough review of the literature to see if there is some kind of study or data out there and definitely I will be back with it. So that was another fascinating study, at least in my opinion, and hopefully this was another fascinating video for all of you out there. As always, you beautiful people, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode. As well, check me out on my other channels, at the official Dr. Dan, and check us out on our website, healthevolve.co. Again, that's healthevolve.co. O is an orange to book a consultation with myself in case you need some support in terms of maybe losing weight before you get on a weight management medication, or perhaps you need that more in-depth support for when you are on the weight loss medication, or even not. You just want to make some changes in your lifestyle. My team is here to help you. So that is it for today, beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, weekend, evening, whenever you're watching this video. And as always, don't forget that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.